live from El Paso, Texas. It's the 10th weekly edition of the number one sports news that proves anything can happen. John Weezy 2018 brings you week 10 action with your fat wears horse announcing for the 10th time this season, Brandon Shadings! <laughs> And thank you, Boss Michael, and hello to your fans at the El Paso, Texas attendance. Are you ready for week 10? Yes, we are. And how are you doing, fans? Oh, well, we have made it to week 10 of our 2018 season here on Chow AC. And things are starting to heat up for once. I have been praising Cole for the past couple of weeks. So, Paul, let's get things started with the first weeks of week 10. All right, Brandon. Let's kick off Week 10's action here in El Paso, Texas with John Miller on the Dazzling Aces, Dave Miller on the Miller Traders, Frank Fonataro, and Nick Gimmick, who has yet to get a win so far after 9 weeks. And please start the race! Alright, so there goes the first one child, busting down the line. We'll also know who will start off their victories for Week 10's action here in our Paxo, Texas. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Numbers 2 and 7 were going west for a while, so these two child will be left behind for the crowd. <coughs> and they're giving his names to the beat. Right now, Frank for the tower, Dave Miller, and John are, 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 are approaching the bridges. It looks like they're going to stay on the bridges, I think. As Nick Gimmick! Opens up the opening toss for this week. He gets the first opening toss on the week. And right now, number 7 is getting left behind in competition on the way back. He really needs a catch up to do. <clears throat> number 7 really wants to get us a speed burst if he wants to get back in this one for sure. But it's Nick Gillett who opens this one up with back to back speed burst. And there he goes! He's flying down the house! Uh oh, now he's trying to battle with Dave Miller for the lead thanks to Magnax Pilas and an incredible flying over at the bridges. What's gonna happen? And look at that. Dave Miller twice one win, so Nick Gimmel will command the lead. As the next Pilas win made by number two, who's trying to lead over the force of a child. <coughs> and number eight, Taunts one win. So he's ready to drop down to the last place over the eight child. We have passed a one minute mark sign race. <coughs> And now it's number one who will get a turn, trying to lead number seven eight in the dust. Meanwhile, Dave Miller, Frank Wanatal, and Nick Gimmick are all battling for the lead up in the front. And Frank Wanatal is going to rest. As we head back into number one, and now he's trying to take the lead away for number two for the lead or force to a chow. Meanwhile, number eight seems like he's getting left behind the competition, but I don't think he'll get any spewers every now and then. Back to number one, and now he dominates over the force to a chat with back to Max Pimas. And back in my front, Nick Gimmick's trying to defend the lead over John Miller and the Dazzling Aces. <coughs> and he's going to rest, trying to get some attention. And John Miller's going to rest as well. But here he comes with the next command Pimas. And Dave Miller will have a little bit of catching up to do. Poor number seven and poor number eight really needs some speed runs, and I mean now. But it looks like number seven is going to rest. That means number eight will have a little bit of catching up too. But I don't think either one will get speed runs every now and then for a while. And number eight is going to rest. As number two, who leaves the two child for d takes his second speed runs to the race. And right now, Dave Miller has made the pass from Nick and Mick. Real slight, Nick and Mick won't be able to get his first win of the season. I highly doubt he'll get any wins this season. Dave Miller is going to be back at 500 mark for this week. As number 7 takes the next match for us, Dave Miller holds a winless Nick Gimmick and John Miller to secure the first victory of week 10. Poor number 8, Ken Jones will get around this way as he is going home. Alright, so Dave Miller has spoiled Nick Gimmick's attempt at his first along the way victory. That's right, Dave Miller got a job done and, and with more time coming out, did not go away. Well, Dave Miller won the first race. Who is going to win the second race of our schedule this week? We'll soon know at race number two will feature the license to drive out here senior, 
Van Helsen of the Dazzling Aces. Paul Tanner and the Computer Wizard Peter Fultz. Everyone is on the clock, so without further ado, we start the race! Okay then, there goes the next four choppers down the line. Trying to earn some points so that they can qualify for at least next season's roster awesome, of 2019. These three shall are all at currently at 3 and 6, so the winner will improve to 4 and 6 for this week. Right now it is Fred Harrison, Rev Commander Lee, followed by Carl Tanner in second place. And it looks like Fred Harrison is going to be heading for the water. And so will Carl Tanner. As the first superstar against Beepus is number one! Let's try this way to catch up. And look at that. Number two is going to rest. So now he will have a little bit of catch up to do. Right now, number seven is better to take the water. And right now, number eight is getting left behind. As the computer wins appear falls, we'll have Beepus number two in his face. And he's going to rest. Right now, it is Fred Hudson who has a commanding lead over Cartana up in the front. He is heading for a sapphire portion of the ammo course. As the next beer that's we made by, the last is a drive, Ali and Senior. Oh, he almost went off course, but he hung on immediately. Right now it is number 8, who is getting all the low in last place behind the four zero chow. As we pass the one minute mark against the sunny race. He is going to get some help with the next command spears, but I think he's a lot more happy than that. <coughs> Fred Harrison is the first to hit the wall with Carl Tanner sitting in an easy second place in the count of one. And it's back to number eight we go. Now a little bit more help trying to make it pass for number two. And right now Alvin and Senior and Peter Falls are battling for third place in the middle of the pack. <coughs> but I think Fred Harrison is going to win this one for sure. No doubt about it. Next best belongs to number seven, and he takes the lead over the fourth of the job for number one. And right now it is Fred Harrison and Carl Tano who are bowing neck to neck, and then into the whole stretch, the Ruby Porsche on here, of course. As I'm here, Senior will get another turn that makes his second speed bus to the base. Catching up with Peter Falls for the second time in his race. <clears throat> and it looks like Fred Harrison is going to have come in and lean up at the home stretch. And it was like Peter Falls was a little bit short of making a flying statement. So, as number 7 takes his second speed bus to the race, you can tell me what up for Fred Harrison. That was an easier fail for Fred Harrison himself. Call. Peter Falls will come in second place, and Carl Tanner will come in third place. As number 1 will take the last speed bus on his face. Oh my, so Fred Harrison got an easy victory. That's why right, he is now at 4 6. He's back on the right track. And we will right back in the more side action after this. So do not go away. Okay, Paul, time for race number 3 on week 10. That's why right, race number 3 will feature the famous Jersey Devil John Stevenson, who has a solid season so far at 5 and 4. He'll be taking on Kyle Leachman, the AC Gamble Tire Phones, and Michael Grayton. Will John Stevenson stay above 500 this week? We're about to find out right now. Let's rock this place! Alright, so John Stevenson going to make, trying to make it 6 and 4 to stay above 500, while Michael Creighton looks to reach the 500 mark at 5 and 5. Let's see who will get that chance in earlier one. Looks like no one said we're going to rest, so these two chat will be left behind for a while. And my now Kyle Richman and Michael Creighton have both eaten the food, and there they go, busting down the line. John Stevenson decided to dance to the beat back at the bridges. No. And in this wrestling turn event, Michael Creighton, our current leader, takes the only toss for his face. Now he has a little bit more, 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 more ahead of Kyle Richman. And right now, number seven is getting left behind in the competition. As Tyler Falls, the AC Gamer, takes the next time as he has. And it looks like the Jesse Neville Jones he was in has once again prevailed on his short cut strategy. Kyle Richman was going last, and John Stevenson has took a short cut. As Kyle Richman, while the next command is Beamers, trying to get back in this one. 
Right now it is Lewis 1-7. We are bowing for D Life all the way in the back of the pack. As Time of Fools will get another turn that makes his second speed burst in the race. As we approach the one minute mark same time race. John Stevenson currently has a commanding lead over Michael Creighton, who is fighting for second place. As number one, who desperately needs help, takes the next command speed. He's still left behind. By now, Tom Phones also really needs to catching up every now and then. But who really got the next command speed? It is going to be number two, who dominates over the fourth third challenge in fourth place. Meanwhile, John Stevenson is just about to hit the top of the wall. And there he is. He is making his way towards the wall. And no one is going to catch up to him in a hurry. Next speed belongs to Tom Phones. That makes his first speed burst in the race. And by now, poor number one and poor number seven are getting left behind in competition on the way map. Oh, and down goes number one. That's what got serious damage. And he's going to hit the wall first. So he's going to have no hope for surviving whatsoever. And this time, Tom Phones goes for consecutive. But I think the big winner is going to be John Stevenson, the Jersey Devil, up in the front from Trenton, New Jersey. Yep, no one's going to catch him in a hurry. As number seven takes the next command, Beavers. Tell me what up for the Jersey Devil himself, John Stevenson. Over Michael Granger by several yards. Great job. And he got an extra us. It is number one at two. Let's see what the other jumps there. Michael Creighton will come in second place. And that is going to be followed by Kyle Richman in third place. By way of saying. And we have just enough time for one more speed out of this base. And we win by number two, who can say farewell to the Oxford Challenge in fifth place. Alright, so the Jersey of John News is now at six and four. That's why after ten races, he still has a solid way. Coming up, we got more SH for you, but first time we'll get this. Next up, race number four, Paul. Who do we have for this one? Race number four will feature Chris Van Ockles, Adrian Lagena, Derek Duplay, and JJ Niedermeyer. Adrian Lagena's going at six and three. Will we get another easy victory? We'll see now. And this one will feature the Gordon Chow. That means he is going to need a lot of help to beat out these Gordon Chow. But I know I, I think one of them can do it. We'll soon know which one will have the power to beat all four of the Gordon Chow points. Here we go. Please start the race. Alright, so. We know we have two Chow class of at least 1,900 or more points on all four of the main categories. Swimming, flying, running, and power to be exact. And right now, this one will be one of the races that will feature the Gordon Chow. Because we have one of those Chow with that stats. And right now, guess who's going to have command of finding for the lead? It's going to be JJ Niemeyer in first, following in a close second by Derek the Play. And it looks like both of these Chow are heading for the water. As Chris Van goes, who's also flying towards the water, wins the only toss this time around. And it is just going to join these three superstars for survival. He is going to join Chris Van and Derek the Play up at the water. As speed was number two in this race, we my number seven, who desperately needs to catch up every now and then. And look at that, not only is one of the golden jumper in the rest, he flies towards over the bridges. I think he will now lean over the four golden jump, thanks to that 40. And in the front, Derek the play is going to rest. As Chris Renault goes, we have a number two, making his second speed bus in the race. Now he was trying to have to prove to face JJ Nehemiah up in the front. And right now, guess who's getting left behind in the competition after the golden rest? It's number 8 now too. We have passed the 1 minute mark in this exciting race. And who is going to get the next command speed us? It's going to be number 1 who is going to rest for a while. But now he is leading number 8 in 10 meet all the way back. Meanwhile, up in the front, it looks like a Jeff pauses from 1. While Chris Manal goes, Derek Dupree and JJ Niemeyer are all bowing towards the wall. Which one will have the edge when you get the whole stretch? We'll find out soon enough. Next BS belongs to... A wing of Jenna! And look at that, one of the Gorgia went down and another one was going to mess. So now he will have a little bit of catching up to do. And right now, poor number 8 is not going to get speed at all. He's going to hit the wall. And look at this, our current leader, JJ Niemeyer, will get the next command speed Now he has a comfortable lead because some of the others are going to mess, like Aaron A wing of Jenna, that's one of them. So JJ Niemeyer will have the privilege to defend the lead at the home stretch. And there he goes, all with that to play at home stretch. As JJ Niemeyer gets back to Mike Spears, and I think he was well played because Dead Play went a little too far that time. 
So if JJ and Neon's gonna hold on for an easy win rate, well play Bino Strategy to get back to Max BS that time. As number one takes Max BS to second, JJ and Neon comes in first, he is the winner of this race. Number one when SB Bus will come in second place, followed by Avery and Jenna in third. And that is going to do it for this race. No more speed runs for this race. Alright, so JJ Nima put this one away. Right, especially with Bad Jack Spear sending into the home stretch. That was well player 40. Back in a bit, do not go away. Alright, folks, after a short break, we now continue with week 10 here in El Paso, Texas. Paul, who we have for race number 5. Race number 5 will feature Zach Olson, who has done pretty well so far. He has 5 and 4 after 9 races, going for win number 6 of the current season. He will be taking on Kevin Days, Jeff Nass, and Al Heer Jr. in the Sunday License to Drive. Everyone is on the clock, and let's have a challenge! Okay, so Zach Olson is trying his best to stay up on 500 this week. So that he'll have a good chance of qualifying for at least next season's 2019 roster, but preferably a 2019 playoff spot as a matter of fact. Right now, Jeff and Alex are ready to vote, and he's dancing to the beat. And there goes Zach Olson. He is going to have him annually up in front, with Kenny Lakes right on his tail in second place. <coughs> And let's see who's going to get the only toss on this week. And that only toss on this race will be made by Al Adrian, sound the license to drive. And number 7A, all go as fast as we can look closer on these two. So these two channels are going to be left behind in the competition for a while. <coughs> number 7A, both really need a lot of catching up to do with due to that nap. As B was number 2 in this race, we may made by Zach Orson. And look at this. Zach Olsen is trying to take the lead away from Kenny Days. Kenny Days hit the water and managed to make it to the other side, but Zach Olsen is trying to make a statement in the other run, trying to spoil Kenny Days' attempt at his first long way winner of the season. By the way, who got the next class for us? It's number two, <coughs> who dominates over the fourth of the child in fourth place, battling with Ali Senior. Now he drew for fourth place, and right now, guess who's getting left behind in the competition as he passed the one minute mark? It's number eight, not two. But it's number one, who will get the next command. We are trying to battle out here during for fifth place. Zach Olsen currently has the lead heading into the Sapphire portion of the course. With Jeff now is not too far behind in second place. And then here comes Jeff now is make try to make a statement in the only one. As the next PS we made by number two. That makes his second PS race. And he continues to dominate over the four seven chow. Number 8, meanwhile, is getting all lower in last place. He really needs some help, but I don't think that is going to happen at all. He's going to be left behind for sure. Next, we have Block Suit, number 7, who's trying to be number 1, and I'm here in the dust, battling for 6th place. And back with fun, Zach Olsen is making his way towards Waterfall, but here comes Jump now is he's probably catching up to him in a hurry. And Kenny is also feeling really need to catch up. He gets the next command SPS. But I highly doubt he will get any wins for the rest of the season. Not for all. <clears throat> and it looks like Zach Olsen is going to defend the lead over Jeff Nass. He is going to give a little bit of movement number more ahead of Jeff Nass. So he is going to stay above 500 for the week. As Kenny Day takes back to next viewers, Jeff Nass won't have enough business to catch up to Zach Olsen in time. Zach Olsen stays above 500 in his win loss record this week over Jeff Nass. And Kenny Nays. Jeff Nays will come in second place. And Kenny Nays will have to come in third place. Well, he's still win with some 10 races. We'll see how he fails in your one. As number 7, we'll have the next command SPS. And I do believe that is what doing for this race. Number 8, can't just forget about this race. He's getting all alone in the last place. Behind the pack. Alright, so Zach Olsen is now 6 and 4. That's right, congratulations to Zach Olsen on an amazing victory, and we'll be right back with more slang action after this. Almost halfway through the schedule for week 10. Let's present race number 6, and then we'll have a hard time break. That's right, race number 6 will feature Gary Coles, Ramon Chante from the Look of the Irish, the 2016 Rises Artist Champion, George Samoa, and two-time world champion, Jason Hill. 
who won in 2014 and 2015 back to back. We are to these four chow and please start the race! Alright, so before we have our halftime break for the week, these four chow will be impressing the fans of the El Paso, Texas attendance with us this week. They are making way to us a palm tree, so bring down that coconut chick fruit. And now they're going to eat the fruit. And it looks like Joshua Salmore is dancing to the beat. That means Grandma Chante and Jason Ho will have the privilege to battle for the lead up in the front. As the first superstar I guess beat this is number 7, who's trying desperately to get back in this one. And right now it is numbers 2, 8, and 1, who are all battling for the life all the way in the backpack. Number 8 is better to take the water, trying to maintain the ground at the, the current moment. <coughs> As the best number two in space, we may lie, Ram one short tail, the Hungarians, and look at this! Up in the front of the Town Hill, it looks like number seven has took a shortcut, and so is the 2016 Renaissance Champion, Joshua Samoa. Well, number seven currently leads over Joshua Samoa by a couple yards. As number two, who desperately needs to catch up every now and then, takes it at current SPS. Number one is really in danger. He really needs to get a lost PS. But as we pass the one in the market, it's Jason Hill, who won back to back titles in 2014 and 2015, who have the next command SPS. Number seven currently has the lead, with Joshua Samuel having the best position so far in second place. <coughs> Let's find out who will get in the next command SPS, and that next PS will be by number two. Now that makes his second speed bonus to the base. Now trying to lead numbers one and eight, and that's all the way to back and back. These three child battling for your life all the way back, with number two winning the battle over these three child, and number one pauses for one, so now he's just better to drop down the last place. Now these child going against Beavis in time, for the moment. Next Beavis belongs to Gary Coles! He was the young children challenging us, as number seven heads for a whole stretch. <coughs> Joshua Sam was trying his best to defend the lead over Jason Hill, for second place in the count moment. <coughs> I don't think Jason Hill will be, ha will be able to make a statement in the other one, yep. As Gary Coles takes back my Kiyos, and that one was a pity right now. It looks like number one is getting left behind at the competition. Well, no one is going to catch up to Joshua Samuel in time, no matter what happens. Yep, that was going to take first place, and Joshua Samuel is the winner with second place. And one of the hot number one would have had an extra Kiyos, but that was Kiyos was evicted when number seven crossed the finish line first. Oh, what a pity. But he does get his speedrunners to make up that. That technically makes two in a row by two in a row for Gary Coles and number one respectively. Anyway, it looks like Raymond Shorty will come in third, followed by Jason Hill in third place, fourth place. And we have just enough time for one more speedrunner to the base. And we made by number two. That makes his first speedrunner to the base. So, Josh Russell Moore, the second place over the eight job, takes the bid rate. He is down six and four. Right, coming up, we can present the second half of week 10, but first let's look at this. Alright, we have six faces all wrapped up. Let's do the other six now. Starting off from race number seven, Brandon, we have Aura Jones, Corey Sarchester, Raymond Hill with the number one contender in running, and Rusty is to be by Jackie 10 for the Go Getters 2.0. Alright, let's send it down to the field once again and present the next signing portion of week 10. Everyone's on the clock and please start the verse! So, last week, Waymore Hill managed to overcome his upsets from week 7 and 8 to win a barn butter in week 9. Will he make it two wins in the month for week 10 here in El Paso? We'll find out soon enough. And he is in the field and there he goes. Let's watch the other three now. It was like once the instant week for Jackie Tins will have come in on second place, followed by Corey Sanchester in third place, <coughs> and once the instant week for Jackie Tins is correct. And it was like Corey Sanchester is going to be heading for the water as Oliver Jones, who desperately trying to get some wins on the board, wins here when he talks about his face. Right now, number one is going to rest, so he's going to be left behind on our win number eight. Numbers one and eight both really needed some help. And it looks like number 8 was Beavis, number 2 in this race. They're both heading for the water, trying to maintain the ground. There goes Raymond Hill, rushing quickly to the top of the hill. Where well, he's trying to maintain balance, trying not 
to fall over him. And he did. Next Beavis walks to number two, who dominates over the four Sewer Chow in third place. Let's take a look at the other three Sewer Chow as they battle for D Life all the way in back to back. And we're approaching one minute mark in this exciting race. And who we got the next class be us? It is number one at two. Trying desperately to get back in this one. Raymond Hill is safely in the lead, and he has no opponents to worry about for the moment. He is going to get another easy victory by way of saying, as Rusty is the replay Jackie 10 while the next command is Poor old Jones, meanwhile, is getting left behind in the competition. And he's going to rest. At number one, pauses for more. So these two jobs are going to be left behind for DUI. Now I want much work against b West for now. They're both going to be left behind, especially Armour Jones, all the way in back. Back to Rusty is the replay guy, Jackington. Now he is by with McCoy Sanchez for second place in the Cameroon. But Raymond Hill has his legs all wrapped up, ladies and gentlemen. Trying to wrap it all up as he has for the home stretch. As number one will get the next command SPS. Well, he can forget about being tailgated by Oliver Jones for the moment. Oliver Jones is going to be busy climbing on the wall. I highly doubt he'll get any wins for this season. My way looks like, yeah. <clears throat> and as number eight takes the next command SPS, Raymond Hill is going to make it two wins in a row for week 10 who are pass off this week. And there you have it, Raymond Hill wishes for the finish line, and he is the winner of race number seven. As the next few as we made by, Oliver Jones. He's better to have enough flying power to make the pass from numbers one and seven. Now numbers one and seven are battling for do I fall on the way to bank it back. And the last p buzz on this race is better to be made by number two. That makes it a second speed buzz to the race. And that will weave this race to a close. Alright, Raymond Hill is now 8 and 2 in his 10 races so far. That's why right, 8 winners of his 10 attempts. And as well as I'm coming out, do not go away. Alright, Paul, let's simple it up, race number 8. You got it, race number 8 will feature Luke Green. The Gunner Star Master Gear Dated, Max Lax Sandsberg, and Mickey Nelson of the Go Gears 2.0. Congratulations to Max Sandsberg for winning last week's race. Let's hope we'll keep it up in week 10 this week. So, will Max Lax Sandsberg make another easy victory, or will one of the others get back on track? There's only one way to find out. Please start the race! Alright, so after his impressive victory in week 9, Max Lang Sandsberg is going for another easy victory. This will be for to make it at the 500 mark if he wins tonight. He is currently at 4 and 5, but if he wins tonight, he will be at the 500 mark again. Let's see if he can make that happen this week. And there goes Max Lang Sandsberg pushing it online. And look at this. He only has to worry about Luke Green for a moment because the other two chow are dancing to the beat. And it looks like the first superstar against Peepers is... Mickey Nelson, who has winning so far after nine races so far. And right now number seven is going to rest. And number eight was dancing to the beat all the way in the back. Number eight really needs to have every now and then. And it looks like number eight is going to be heading for the water. As the bus is number two in this race, we made by number seven, who leaves the Gotham Star Master Gary DJ in the dust. And Luke Green is with us. That means number one will have the privilege to battle with him, and so will Mickey Nelson. Max Lang Sandsberg also trying his best to join the other three in a hurry. And who will get the next command speed race? It's back to Mickey Nelson. That makes his second speed race race, trying to take the lead away from number one. Garrett Dayton is getting left behind all the way in the back, as we pass the one minute mark in this race. He really needed a lot of speed rest, but who will we got in the next one? It's Max Lang Sandsberg. Trying to make a statement after Mickey Nelson ran for some part of the of the race early on. Right now a couple of Sir John also getting left behind the competition. With number eight really in dead meat on the way in the back in the back. Let's see what happens here as Biggie Nelson. Well the next gonna be us that makes his best be in the race. Trying to take the lead away from Max Lang Sandsburg and down most number eight. He almost went on course. Anyway, he is getting left behind. He is going to need a couple of speedways to get back in this one. 
and this is a first man, and he was able to make a pass from Garrett Dayton with authority. So now Garrett Dayton will again drop down in last place. Let's see if he'll stay in last place this time. He is trying his best to stay alive, and it's Max Luxemburg up in the very front, who will get the next game of SPS. He is trying to run away from Winners Vicky Nelson. Trying to get back on the 500 mark after a couple of bumps in the row. Anyway, Rook Green will get his second first place. But it looks like Max Max Sandsburg is going to have plenty of room ahead on these two opponents. Max Max Sandsburg is going to be back at the 500 at 5-5 five and five this week. And there you have it. Max Max Sandsburg is the winner. As Mickey Nelson will have the next game SPS that makes his fourth first place. Well, he's still winless, but who won in the second place? Still dominating in the second place. Yeah, Dayton will have a win on that week. Next time, next time, Gary Dayton, and all the others too. And Max Lex Sandsburg, congratulations! You are back in the 500 mark at 5 wins and 5 losses. That's right, 5 and 5, Paul! And we are back for the next exciting race after we present a word from this. And welcome back to week 10. I hope everyone has a great time watching the races here in El Paso, Texas so far this afternoon. Still to come, Paul, Chip Survey is looking for his third and final superstar on week honors. That's right, Brandon, it should be an exciting one. But for this place, for race number 9, we have Krishnaya from the Classic Go Getters, Steven Man from the Local Yarmush, Antonio Bennett of the Classic Go Getters, and Daniel Heenan, the son of Noise and Drive, Alvin Heenan Sr. Everyone's on the clock, and please start the race! Alright, so we have both the members of the class of go-getters for this next race, uh, along with one half of the look of the average, and out here see his younger brother Danielle in this next race. No matter what happens here, anything can happen in a challenging in the universe. That's the mind we always keep, Brandon. That's right, Paul. Anything can happen indeed. Alright, Paul, you know what to do. Alright, so, as Steve Wigman heads for the bridges, the first superstar against Beepus is number two, who's trying to lead over the four seven shot in four place. And Antonio Bennett is gonna rest. That means he's gonna be left behind in the competition all the way in the back. And number one is gonna join Antonio Bennett for DUI. And it looks like Antonio Bennett seems like he's gonna be heading for the water, trying to regain some ground in the only one. As number one, who definitely needs help every now and then, takes Beepus number two in the space, and look at that. Number 8 is going to rest, so now number 1 will have a little bit of catching up to do. And it's still in red on Logan Alish, who has a commanding lead up in the front, following in a close second by Chris Schneider, one half of the class of go-getters. <coughs> As the next beers we made by, Daniel Heenan, who is the son of the license to drive out here in Senior. And right now it is Antonio Bennett, who also really needs help. We have passed the 1 minute mark in this exciting race. And the fans in our packs are really on their feet, standing in ovation. We'll get the next command speed It's number one. That makes his second speed in the race. And now he leads over the 4 7 Chan fifth place. Poor number eight is getting left behind the competition. And he talks more. So now he's way behind the competition. Do that. Pause anymore. That means he's going to need a couple of speed bursts if he wants to get back in this one. And this is one of them trying desperately to stay alive. Meanwhile, Steve Wingman has reached the top of the wall, and he's making his way towards the waterfall. Will anybody be able to stop Steve Wingman from getting the win? We'll find out soon enough. Back to number A, and he continues to fight for Dear Life. Now he's got you with number 2 and 7 for Dear Life on the way back. Right now it is Daniel Keenan who's trying to hold on to Schneider for second place. Back over at the waterfall portion of the course. There we go, they're flying towards the home stretch. And who will get in the next command speed It is Antonio Bennett, the next year superstar. But this race is all about Steve Wingman as he makes his way towards the finish line. Steve Wingman, the famous boy from Ireland, was in a huge victory over the pack. So now he stays by 500 at 6 and 4 this week. As number 2 will get another turn, that makes his second speed run race. And that was enough to take the lead back from the fourth to a chow as the race comes to a close. Alright, Steve Wingman now has six wins on the board. That's why six out of ten races ain't bad. And there's more seven coming up. Do not go away.
And now race number 10. Race number 10 will feature Big Cherry Tarnays, Glenn Murray, our defending third place contender, Bobby Mina Bobby K, and Buster Najabo. Glenn Murray did a very good job winning last week's race. Let's hope he keeps it up for week 10 this week. And we want us on a card, so without further ado, we start the race! Okay, there goes Glenn Murray, busting down the line, trying to stay above 500 in his redemption season this year. But uh, he is sure he is going to lead the NHL and chicken the Padres and bring down Uncle Gun Chick Fruit. And now he's going to eat the fruit. And there he goes, busting down the line. He is going to lead for the Cowboys, and he's going to rest. That means Big Cherry Town is my command. I'm going to lead for the moment. As the first superstar gets beat, best ends. Number one, and he can forget about going to rest. He keeps on going. He is going to the other three opponents to Harry. Right now, number eight is going to rest. So he's going to be left behind in the competition over at the bridges. <coughs> number two seems like he also really needs help, but it's the body made up by Gay who has control speed with number two in his face. And guess what, fans? This is why this guy is going to have a good chance at his redemption this year. Grand Mary has took a shortcut. So I do believe he is going to stay about 500 this week after taking a nap earlier in the race. Grand Mary is making his way toward the Sapphire Fortune, of course, trying to get one step closer towards his redemption chance at his redemption this year. As the next piece we made by number 8, who desperately needs to catch up every now and then. And right now, Tommy Days is trying to defend second place, and he talks for one. Thus, get made by the K, the privilege to battle with him for second place. <coughs> Bobby K and Tommy Days are battling for second place to come win. As Bobby K, we're out in the next command of the US. And right now, I think he's out of pausing, turning on good rest. I don't know. Meanwhile, number 8 seems like he is getting left behind in competition. He really needs to get lost, Beavis, and I mean right now, this instant. But it's Buster the Jabo who have the next commands because that's a little bit of catching up to do. But I do believe Tommy, Glenn Murray, yeah, Glenn Murray is gone, ladies and gentlemen. No one's going to catch up to him in a hurry. Next Beavis belongs to number 2, who's trying to lead number 8 in us. Take a look at point number 2 and point number 8. They're both getting left behind the competition for Neo So Chow. Number 8 is really dummy here, folks. And numbers 2 and 7 are going to rest. And Buster Java will have the next command speedbus as Gwenmoy holds on the competition by about a landslide. Gwenmoy is now 6 and 4 in his redemption run this year. Well done by Gwenmoy. And number 5 performance by Gwenmoy this week. And this time, Buster and Jamo goes with the consecutive. Now, be able to take second place over Big Johnny Tommy Days. And the last speedrunner of this race is going to be made by number 8. That makes it the second speedrunner of the race. And he can lead poor number 2 in dead meat on the way in the back. So, after resting for a while, it is Gwen Mally who prepared for a short cut to stay above 500. That's why his redemption is continuing to run strong. Not gonna be, do not go away. Well, folks, only a couple more races left for week 10. That's why right, the first several remaining races will feature Vince Dyson, last year's one around Howard Miller from the Miller Trainers, Ralph Dennis, and the fastest swimmer of the spring half of the season, Casey Raymondson. Everyone is on the ground, get best run to those next four participants. Here we go, we start the race! And it looks like Ralph Dennis is going to rest. That means Ben Stason, Hal Miller, and Casey Raymondson will have the opening edge. We'll soon find out which one of them will pay off or not in the only one. As these three shall make their way towards the parties. And it looks like number seven is going to join Ralph Dennis for the life. He's going to rest as well. Right now, let's watch Ben Howard and Casey. They're going to eat the fruit. Which one must we have command away? It is going to be Vince Dyson, who is going to have the upper hand because the other two chow are dancing to me. And who will get the only toss for this race? It's last year's one round, Howard Miller. And look at that. Vince Dyson is going to rest, which means Howard Miller will have control of the way for the moment. And Ralph Dennis is dancing to the beat on the way back in the bridges. So now he is getting left behind the competition for dear life. 
at speed race number two in this race, we may my Casey Williamson, and he's going to make me pass somehow, Miller, he is going to mess. Meanwhile, it looks like Ben Stason is going to make sure he's outside on the, on the water, and so will Ralph Dennis. These two will be battling finally up in a fight with Ben Stason, safely in the lead ahead of Ralph Dennis by a few several yards. As the next BS we made by number two, who's trying this way to catch up. Numbers one and eight also trying desperately to catch up. Well, number one seems like he's winning the battle over D Life. We have passed a one minute on Sangways. One of them might be able to get a speed bus. They really want to get some speed and want to get back in this one. But right now, let's head back to number two. Now, trying to catch up a little more. And right now, it is Ben Stason who is in the lead heading into the Sapphire portion of the course. And let's find out who will get the next one. And that next beamers is going to be made by none other than Casey Raywall said that makes it second beamers of the race, but it will be a miracle to catch up even with this incredible swing and bounty. Poor number eight meanwhile is getting left behind by numbers one and seven, but I don't think he'll get any beamers, and neither will numbers one and seven in a hurry. They're going to be left behind college for sure. Next beamers belongs to Ralph Dennis. And he's trying desperately to catch up to Arlena, Ben Stason up in the front. Real like numbers 1 and 8 won't be able to get a speed bus before they hit the wall. They are going to be busy climbing up the wall, folks. So let's head back over to Ralph Dennis. Now he's catching up with Ben Stason. Look out, Ben Stason. Ralph Dennis is right on his tail. Let's find out who will have enough flying power to get the lead at the home stretch. It looks like... Ben Stason is going to hold up Ralph Dennis by a couple of feet. By what it looks like. Yep. As number 7 takes the next command speed Looks like Ralph Dennis won't have enough distance to catch up to Ben Stason in time. Ben Stason is going to get his long-awaited second win of his 2018 season. Ben Stason holds up Ralph Dennis for the win. As number 7 is going to close this one out with Bad Demarks Pierce. That makes two in a row by two in a row. And numbers 1 and 8 can just forget about this race. Okay, Paul, we only have a couple more races left for week 10. And the first of those remaining races, granted, will feature Vince Stacey, Ralph Jesus Monroe, Harold Miller, and the Miller Trainers, Ralph Dennis, and a hard train wins, Anton Kingsway, who has a solid season so far at 6 and 3. I bet you he's going to do it again this week, no shake. Anyway, please start the race! And it looks like Ralph Dennis is going to rest, so he will be left behind in the crowd. And number one is going to join those two child for D-Life. <clears throat> number seven seems like it's also going to rest. So these three child are going to be left behind for the crowd. Right now the other three child are going to eat the fruit. And it looks like Anton Kingsley and Hammer are going to be bowing for the open front. Because Vince Dyson is dancing to the beat. And it looks like Anton Kingsley and Hammer are both heading for the water. Trying to maintain some ground as the first superstar gets beat, but it's Ben Stason who wakes up from his nap, and Ralph Dennis is heading for the water, trying to maintain some ground. Right now, number eight is going to rest as he and numbers one and seven join him at the water, trying to maintain some ground over at the competition. There they are, numbers one, seven, and eight all rushing for the water. As Ralph Dennis, who has B was number two in this face, and as it's trying to get we catch up. And number two, taunts for more. That means Spen has dropped down a couple of places. Especially the last place. Ben Stason also really needs to catch up to do. But right now, it is number eight who leads on the fourth third child for the current moment with the next command speed Back up in front, F5 King Swing is trying to defend his lead over Harold Miller by a short distance. And we have passed the one minute mark. F5 King Swing is doing a pretty good job trying to make a statement towards the 2019 title. As number two, who desperately needs to catch up every now and then, takes the next command for yours. <coughs> and number seven pauses for me. So now he's better to drop down the last place over the competition. <coughs> now he has a lot of catch up to do every now and then. We'll get the next command for yours. It's number one, I two. Now he has control of the lead over the four seven chow. Meanwhile, F5 Kingsway and Hal Miller are uh, making its way to the wall and climbing up with RMI. Ralph Dennis is right on his tail, but it's maybe going to focus on F1 Kingsway and Hal Miller. We'll also know which one will pay off in the only one. Next, BS belongs to 
Ben Stacy, now Max is his second speed bonus to the base. Right now it is F1 Kingston who's trying to defend the lean over Hal Miller. As Hal Miller will get the next command speed it's going to be a showdown down for the ages. They're both heading for the home stretch. <clears throat> and it looks like by just a few inches, F1 Kingston will defend the lean over Hal Miller. Hal Miller's fine came so close, but no cigar. So F1 Kingston is going to sell away an easy victory over the competition. So it also goes to be must. As F1 Kingsway holds up Hammer by joint distance. He avoids Hammer's epic comeback strategy. One of the other F1 Kingsway. As number two, while well, the next guy is just making his second speed of space. So now F1 Kingsway is, is at seven and three. That's why right, he avoids Hammer's epic run. So F1 Kingsway is still alive in his 2019 title chances. Well done, the main event is just around the corner. But right now, let's hear what from this sponsor. Okay, fans of El Paso, Texas, are you ready for We Tenth Main Event? Yes, the fans are giving us the green light for a Week Tenth Main Event. So let's go, Brandon. But this week's main event for Week 10 will feature our two-time returning champion Chip Survey, or defending world champion Donald Lennox, Joe Raffley, and the fastest swimmer Casey Rewinson. And this one will feature the Golden Challenge again, and Week 10's main event is presented by Deetson Watson Hot Dogs. Shout out for a spin hot dogs, and I'm sure I'm pretty sure you like it too. Every fan of Deetson Watson's Hot Dogs is made to a pure perfection. Visit the open grocery store to pick up a, a pack of Deetson Watson's Hot Dogs today. So, without further ado, the players line up, and the fans are getting ready for Week 10's main event, so please have a challenge! Alright, here we go with the Week 10's main event here in El Paso, Texas, and Donald Manning is going to be right behind the competition for a while. And right now it looks like Casey May wants to taunt for a point, trying to get some attention here. Right now, it's going to be Chip Sube and Joe Raffley who are going that way for the lead. And it looks like both of these Chow are dancing to the lead. That means the four Gordon Chow will have control of, of the upper hand. And look at that. Casey Lee is going to have full control of this match for the moment. And who will get the only toss on weekend main event presented by Decent Watching Hot Dogs? It is going to be Joe Raffley who gets it. That's who. And Donald Redding is getting left behind on competition. He is our defending world champion. But he needs a lot of work if he wants to repeat his title for 2019. Anyway, he's going to be flying towards the water, and I think someone took a shortcut. Yep, as Casey Ray wants to take the viewers number two in his face, trying to stay alive. It looks like Chip Sibley is going to get his third and final Superstar Week, which means the next individual show will feature four new Superstars, and that's probably not until June, because we were supposed to go on a trip in a couple of weeks. Yeah, Florida. That's going to happen in the next week's show. But right now, let's head back to this week. That's the next PS we made by number one. And right now, it looks like number seven and eight are getting left behind in the competition all the way in the back of the pack. And right now, it is Casey Raymond who talks for one. As the number eight won the next command PS, Chip Survey is safely in the lead, climbing up the wall in the very front. Meanwhile, Donald Reddings has a commanding second place over the other side of the as Casey Ray Watson. Well, the next command yes, right, that's where to get back in this one. Chip Stewart is all alone in the lead, and he is going to easily get his third and final superstar week. This will make it 7-3 in his 10 races so far. He is going to win this one for sure, no doubt about it, folks. Back to Casey Ray Watson, and it will be a mule goal to catch up with his swimming ability, even with back in back to yes. Donald Reigns might also need a meal though, but I don't think that is going to happen for this one. Well, there's always the rest of the season for Donald Reigns. And he passes for one. As number two on the next class, Beamers, Chip Silver is going to get his third and final Superstar of the Week to complete his Superstar of the Week trilogy series. And there you have it! Chip Silver is the Superstar of the Week for the third and final time. So he gets up to 7 and 3 and Star Linux. Well, the next command PS, and I do believe that is probably going to do it for the PS because Casey Ramosan is swimming like crazy. He'll want it in third place. And it looks like Joe Rafferty will come and will, will complete the setting 
Well, I'll pass seconds. And that's gonna do it for week 10's action. Oh, that's ever so closing. So, Chip Simmy is the Superstar Week for the third and final time. That's why congratulations to Chip Simmy for the past three weeks. The closing messages is coming up after we hear what for next. Alright, so we're done with week 10 here in El Paso, Texas. Next week will be our pre Florida vacation special, in which we'll be coming to you live this year from Daytona Beach in Florida, where we'll bring you all the excitement as the child emperor prepares for his exciting Florida trip. The first of his two exciting Florida trips, as a matter of fact, this year for 2018. And thanks to everyone who participated in the audience here in El Paso today. We'll be back right next week with more exciting action. Until then, this is Flash Hang signing off. Keep on smiling and so long, everybody! This is Paul Second while signing off. Join us next week as we begin the countdown to John Emperor's exciting for the vacation. See you then!